Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Sharon. I'm Bert. This is for story time. For story time. Even though it's Halloween. Yeah. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Um, but this isn't scary. No, this is um <laughs> our wrap up for my so called book club. We've come to the end of the two month period for the last book, which was Balls by Pat Cadigan. Um, cyberpunk novel from 1993 two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about some of our thoughts on yeah. that one and maybe a few thoughts that people have shared with us. Yeah. And then we're going to announce the next book club pick. Well, so, as voted for on Instagram, so yes. you might already know what it is if you did if you follow you, yeah, us you on might Instagram, do. yeah. Or if you want to be in the voting for the next lot, yes. it'll be on Instagram uh, next year. <laughs> next year, at this point, yeah. <laughs> because it's like every two months, isn't That's it? Right. So the next book will be for um, November, December. Yeah, and if you don't know what My Circle Book Club is, it's a '90s themed book club where we read books published in the '90s. Um, I'd say uh, the, 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 the main goal is to read books that maybe would have passed us by or that we've never heard of, ones that have slipped under the radar a bit. Although we've kind of gone all over the place um, and I've tried to sort of skip around different genres and themes and even eras that the book's set in. Um, so yeah, um, and it's open to everyone. So if anyone wants to just read along with us, it's just a very casual two month thing. Um, you can read the book, you can share your thoughts if you want to, or you can just enjoy it, and or you can comment below in our videos, or you can send us Instagram. Yeah, because or... the ethos is 90 slacker, isn't it? Yeah. So you it. don't, it, it's as yeah. much effort as you can be bothered Keeping to put it into it. As loose as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Johnny, what did you think of Fools? So, Fools. This was an interesting one, wasn't it? This is, uh, I keep so steaming up. Mm. Um, this is sci-fi. Yes. Um, I've been looking into her, and she calls herself like hard science fiction as right, well. Right. Okay. Um, and cyberpunk. Yes. It's on the sci-fi class masterworks classics. It won the Arthur C. Clarke Award for best novel. It's not really your genre, is it? It's that's where I'm heading. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really my genre. I'm not. I've not read much sci-fi. No, not um, even at the time. Would you have said? Well, in the 90s, yeah. no. I've read like a few young adult sci-fi, yeah. um, which I can cope with. And I've read some Philip K. Dick. Yes. And that would probably be well, all I, of it. Yeah, and I think Philip K. Dick is almost kind of like, you know, within the cyberpunk world from what I've discovered. I knew nothing about cyberpunk at all. I thought this would be my first cyberpunk novel. But I think like some of the, having read this, and I think it's definitely, there's definitely Philip K. Dick influence in there, isn't it? Like the multiple realities yeah 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 just wanted to say um we have done a, a tiny bit of research on pat cadigan haven't we and we discovered this on the wikipedia page that in the 1960s cadigan and a childhood girlfriend invented a whole secret life in which they were twins from the planet venus um she said the beatles came to us for advice about their songs and how to deal with fame and other important matters cadigan says on occasion they would ask us to use our highly developed shape-shifting ability to become them and finish recording sessions and concert tours when they were too tired to go on themselves. The Venusian twins had other superpowers that they would sometimes use to help out Superman, Wonder Woman and other heroes, she said. Amazing. And yeah. I looked, that was on the Wikipedia page under the section Childhood Fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I like that that was a section on the Wikipedia page. Yeah. So she seems pretty cool. I, had, were... I did, before reading the book, watch her give a, oh, okay. a short, a brief talk um, which I found really interesting where she was discussing uh, a kind of more theory side of her writing and the idea of multiple realities and specifically virtual reality, which I think was a big kind of concern at that time, early 90s, because um, it was kind of pre the internet properly taking off. So the internet existed, but no one really had, you know, we didn't even have like email or anything like that. No one we knew did would have done anyway. Um, so, yeah. I think before that aspect of the internet took off, mm. I think uh, virtual reality was a big, yeah. the next big thing, wasn't it? And I also just saw a thing where she um, 
talked about how it's like it's um, science fiction, but she said of her earliest book, Sinner, she said there's sinners, there's less science fiction in there than there used to be. So she's saying that a lot of the stuff she wrote about is now yeah. kind yeah. of real life, I guess. Yeah, and we discussed, both of us kind of felt with this that it sort of doesn't do much world building, you sort of just thrust into this world. And yeah. I think that's because... Um, I think it's the same world that she created in Sinners and right. I think the previous two books. Um, not that it's a, in any way a sequel, but I think she's kind of established a, to but a certain was, extent a certain world. There was that world. quote I sent to you on your phone where she talks about throwing the reader, just throwing the reader in. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting, the bit that she that she said there. Uh, this is the type of book that I like to read, she said. I like to jump in, I want to be in over my head right away and try and figure it out as I go along. This is really the story of my life, you know. I never get any exposition or preparation for anything. I'm always thrown in at the deep end of whatever I do. And I've got to figure out how to adapt, survive or die. Yeah, and that fits in actually with... Because I um, buddy read this with Alicia from Alicia Reads. And, and I buddy read mine with Heather. Yeah. The Soviet and I, book I think it, we definitely appreciated having buddy readers along with us on this ride. Because it kind of helps sort of tether you a little bit. I don't think I would have got through it without Heather. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I loved reading this one, um, but yeah. You, so how many stars did you give it? I gave it five stars. Yeah, yeah. but loved it. Yeah, it was a three for me. Yeah, <laughs> but actually, relating to what um, Cadogan says, um, Alicia uh, did say that Cadogan is um, toying with the reader and shutting down every opportunity to ground oneself. Yeah, um, which is true. There is an element of um, deliberately keeping us confused. Yeah, I think. Um, which I really, really appreciated the, the level of skill it took to hold us at that distance where we kind of still there, still following, but not quite fully Grasping knowing. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was also messaged by Alex, um, stay-at-home reader, who was reading along with us as well. And she, she said, I think I'm following, but also have no idea what's happening. Is that possible? <laughs> and I think that totally sums up yeah. the book, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 I agree. So I think that that was a, a constant sense throughout. Yeah. You we can didn't sort of we grasp a... a certain amount and then it yeah. sort of pull it back from yeah. you. Yeah. Or what happened to me was that um, I felt there's three sections in it and the first section is the longest one. Um, and also, in one sense, it's the most confusing one, maybe. Yeah, I think but so. I did feel like I was, I was like Alex was saying, I was following along with that first section while not quite understanding it, but I felt I'd, I was grasping it. And then, um, then I hurt my knee. <laughs> yes. I think that <laughs> and, did put a. It's a and I think it, moment in, yeah. in our life. And I think it made it made me a bit, you know, I was really uncomfortable and it made me a bit sad. Hmm. And it felt like it wasn't the book, you know, you have to work hard at it. So when you went feeling great, it wasn't yeah. the book for that. So then when I went into parts two and three, I kind of, um, I found it really difficult to keep up with it then, yeah. even though I know yeah. you said it was easier I to thought, follow. like, interestingly, structurally, I felt like it got more accessible as it went on. Possibly, um, but I... I yeah. Weirdly, found it the other way around. Yes, yeah, and I can see. We haven't talked about what it is about either. Do you want to do a quick plot summary well, or not? Well, there's not much plot summary to no. discuss really because it's essentially um, about a. Well, you start off with a character called Marva, who is a um, method actress, method actor, um, who then sort of you can still notice by the change in the text that it sort of seems to slip into this other character, who's this Marceline character. Um, so change in font. Change, yeah, yeah, change in the font. Sorry, and um, she, the Marceline character is a mind junkie in that she is, uh, yeah, hooked on other people's memories, um, which you can buy now on the black market kind of thing. Um, but she's also employed as a um, what's her mind, please? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> mind, please. <laughs> She's um, also an escort, um, which you kind of find out it, uh, they're, they're sort of employed from, from what I remember, I feel like there's a bit of a distance between me reading this and talking about it now, is that she's employed to go into people's memories and take out certain like uh, personalities from them. Yeah. Um, and we don't want to go any further than that because then it reveals more and more about who these two People Do we not want to are... talk about mind police? No. Um, but yeah. There's a quote I find that said, she blurs the line between reality and perception by making the human mind a real explorable place. That's interesting. Which I thought was, yeah. so it's not about kind of 
yeah, what what is real and yes. what is not, and yeah. who's the real person and all that kind of stuff. And yes. And I think a lot of having a character that is basically a mind junkie or like a memory junkie, she, um, yeah, she feeds off of other people's memories, I guess, um, as like a high. And there, there does seem to be a lot of casual um, leeching off of each other in this kind of future sort of almost sort of dystopian almost world um, where it's very sort of casual and... I don't know, it feels like sort of, I don't know, your sense of self is lost really easily. And like that brought up loads of discussions for me anyway. Uh, and okay. like to what extent, you know, like are, are we our memories or like how are our experiences, um, how much of us is just our experiences and what, are, what we remember and those around us and how much is, is like a core self. Because obviously. I'm not sure me and Heather had those conversations. <laughs> Because obviously this is a, a future where like you can download personas and you can sort of overlay personas onto your own to, to the extent that it wipes out the, uh, yourself so you can't remember who you really are when you're someone else. And I said I gave it three stars and I just found it a little bit beyond me and mm. I wouldn't have finished it, I don't think, if I wasn't... Well, if it wasn't like a reading group book, because yeah. like, it wouldn't be something I'd pick up. No. Um, and that I was reading it with Heather and I found it really... That having that little structure, we read a certain amount a day, and yeah. then having a chat about it. I know that Heather kind of um, followed it way more than I did because she was asking questions that I didn't know were, <laughs> were actually questions. Yeah. Um, uh, but I the bits that I did sort of like the beginning bits, and that even though we said there wasn't really any world building, and you're just kind of thrown in it, there were. I liked the little bits about the world that she was in. Yes, so I like the kind of what's it called. Um, the kind of area that she lives. Oh, the slums. The downs. The downs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I like the stuff about the downs, and I like the stuff about coffee. You can yeah. get like coffee in like little cubes. Yeah, I knew you like the coffee. Yeah. yeah. And then Heather said that she liked the the fashion. Yes. So I've got a yeah. quote from Heather. Oh, good. She said, "I specifically remember someone in the creepy punishment store wearing a rubber suit." <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't that a thing in real life? We yeah. live in Wales. What better weatherproofing than that? <laughs> Which is very timely because it's, yeah. it's literally been raining all week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other bit I really um, stuck out with me was the... Uh, she goes to like a food place and they're sort of um, pumping out appetite gas. Yes, that's it. And they pump yeah. out appetite gas. So it's like literally yeah. sort of affects you like yeah. appetite. That You think that that might be a thing? So we well, don't people, know about. People do pump, you do get pumped out smells of bread in places, yeah. only, which is not far off. Yeah, it's true. But, yeah. And that's what we were discussing, was like how not far off a lot of this stuff is, even though yeah. like it's terrifying. We kind of were discussing how it preempts a lot of what happened with the internet. Yeah. In that like, it's that thing of imprinting, like the internet is a place where we imprint ourselves so that we exist outside of our bodies and also way beyond the death of our bodies. So we're still kind of, our memories, thoughts, and you know, even like our like physicalities are like imprinted. Yeah. Uh, in, in this other world, forever, you know. Yeah. Um. Amy. Amy read it as well, and uh, she described it as mind bendy. She really got into it, I think, and uh, like me, uh, she was like, we really need to explore more cyberpunk, and I felt that as well, having read it. I know you didn't. <laughs> But I really felt like, oh, okay, this is like a genre with loads of interesting ideas. Um, yeah, going I, I saw the you know, like I I definitely felt like it was an interesting book, and I you know it was well written, yes. and I liked what you and Alicia were talking about as well about there not being any kind of because um, it's a female sci-fi writer, isn't it? As yeah. well, there's no kind of relationship stuff really, is there? There's no yeah, yeah. romance, you know. Yeah, like well, Alicia picked up on yeah. that. She was, cause I think she's a bit more up with the genre. Yeah, she did say that. Um, that cyberpunk is a genre um, often totally dominated by men and that um, Callaghan didn't just contribute to the genre, I feel like she kind of took control of it. So yeah, she did like, there's no sort of romance in their element and you know, obviously the majority of the characters or character, whichever way you're looking at it, a female, yeah. it was a whole different perspective on the genre, yeah. I think. So, so kind of like a feminist. Yeah. I mean, it is a feminist. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, that's kind of our thoughts, would you say? Yeah, Anything I was just going to say, um, our friend Grace, I think, gave up on it. Yes. Did Charlotte, Charlotte give up on it? Well, Charlotte started it. Yeah. Um, but I know that she wasn't, like, doing super well with reading anyway, so it's probably not, it's not the book where you're, like, Absolutely struggling not. to read. No. You need to, to and also you need to 
focus on it as well yes. so you can't just casually read no. um and i think pages. you have to read it as quickly as possible almost. definitely because also that was the thing about when i hurt my knee i took a day off from reading it yeah. and i felt that just having that day off got me out of it a you bit lose all so the like strands yeah quite easily. yeah it is a case because like you're barely holding on as it is <laughs> then if you put it down for a day or so it's like what that yeah i mean i kind of appreciated reading it yeah. Even though I didn't really enjoy it. I think it's a book that none of us would have maybe picked up. No, I've never heard or, of it. No, so I think that's the aim of the book club. Yeah, and, and thank you, Heather, for reading it with me. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> uh, Yeah, you know, I think Leisha gave it four stars. Yeah. I think that she said, or said that there were still... It was kind of one of those ones that would repay a reread Because oh, there were still elements of it yeah. that you weren't sure about. We kind of liked that the ending was quite sort of ambiguous as well, so it does kind of... I blocked it. <laughs> I tapped. Um, thank you to everyone that voted, joined in, yeah. read along, um, tried to read, gave up, yeah. anything. Thank it's you so much. Yeah, it's all all right, isn't it? It's it the 90s. It's the 90s. <laughs> what's, what's the next book? The next book has voted for by you um, under the theme of... So we had three books to choose from. The theme was Murders in Alaska in the 90s. Um, I wanted to, to read something with snow. And then I thought kind of the crime mystery would be a really nice thing going into Christmas and the end of the year as it gets darker and colder. And they just happened to be on my list when I was like working on my list, lots of books, which I kind of noticed were set in Alaska. Um, and ultimately, we voted for um, White Sky, Black Ice by Stan Jones. I believe that's correct. <laughs> I'll read you the description because obviously we don't know very much about it. It's the first in a series um, and it's the Nathan Active Mysteries. All set in Alaska. Um, the author resides in Alaska uh, in a small Alaskan village of Chukchi. What are the odds of two suicides occurring in a matter of a few days? State trooper Nathan Active discovers that his suspicions concerning the deaths are well founded. The two men were murdered, but what was the motive and who killed them? Um, some of the reviews say, Active maintains his awe of the vast Alaskan tundra, a forbidding region that Jones renders in all its bone-chilling beauty. That's from Marilyn Stasio, the New York Times. Um, Active maintains his... Oh, same quote twice. <laughs> They've just not put Marilyn Stasio as, as the second one. Trooper, Active proves such an interesting and likeable guy that the selfish reader can't but hope Nathan won't get Anchorage transfer for at least a few more books. So I think the um, the main beginning of the plot is that, yeah, Nathan, Nathan Active is moved to this small Alaskan village. Perfection. Yeah, so uh, he's like, uh, so it's like the he's film, new there. So. Northern Lights <laughs> yeah. Eddie Cyprian. I think this sounds really good. Okay. My... Um, Slight reticence would be that he's writing a lot about uh, indigenous people. Yes. Um, so, a as a white man, I yes. Didn't know, but, yes. Um, yeah. So we'll see yeah. how that is. Heads up for some nineties appropriation. Yeah. Um, born to a poor Inupiat girl in Chukchi, Alaska, north of the Arctic Circle, state trooper Nathan Active was adopted and raised by a white family in Anchorage. Now, an unwelcome job reassignment has returned him to the stark, beautiful landscape of poverty-stricken Chukchi. Um, where these apparent suicides have taken place. Um, uh, someone regarded by the community as half white, he must fight for every clue before the killer strikes again. So I know uh, that, that Stan Jones, the author, is um, obviously from Alaska and is involved with the indigenous Alaskan community to a certain extent. And I know that he's done some, he's fought for lots of. Um, land things um, on on behalf of that community. Um, I don't know much else about him. We'll have to see how that. We will see how goes. he does it. Yeah. Yeah. But I really like the idea of being in Alaska. Me too. I love kind of Alaskan. Yeah. <laughs> like I've read loads, but I love a kind of snowy. Your sounds all about a setting. Yeah, I love a setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, obviously, you know, join us if you if you want to if you like the sound of it. That's the nice thing about the nineties book club is like if you don't like the sound of this book. Just wait two more months, then there'll be another one. Yeah, and um, just, you don't have to do anything, just read it. And then we can just have a chat at the end of the two months. Yeah. Um, and so to that end, kind of, if you did read this, and we haven't kind of yes. mentioned stuff that you said, 
please let us know and yes. let us know what you think. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Whether you were more on the Bertie side or the Shani side. Five stars. <laughs> and actually, it's not usually because you say that usually if one of us gives a book five stars, the yes. other one usually likes it a lot as well. Yeah. And it wasn't really the case with no. this one. Yeah. So I don't know if we're like drifting apart. Do you like the sound of um, Nathan Active? Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Active Mysteries. I think it's going to be excellent. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that, I guess. Thanks for joining. My Circle Book Club. My Circle Book Club. Bye bye. Okay. That was good.